the Anker Soundcore Motion Plus speaker against the Mini Rig Mark III. One speaker and a pair of speakers in stereo. I thought the first requests I'm going to get are going to be, well, can you compare it against the JBL Charge 4? Well, actually, the first request I'm getting is, can you compare it against the Mark III? However, it's a testament to this speaker, which you can easily get for 90 quid. People are asking to compare it to the 150 pound or 140 pound speakers that are out there. There's already an acceptance that it's bloody cheap for what it is. And I'm not saying, just to say, I, I was quite gloating about this speaker. My first video, I just want to make sure, clarify, I'm gloating because it's incredible value for money. I'm not saying this is the first and last speaker you will ever need. It sounds like hi-fi, it's amazing, and it retrieves every bit of detail you'd ever want. I'm saying it's a lot of fun. I'm saying it's incredible value for money, and I'm enjoying listening to them. However, I'm not saying it's the greatest thing that's ever been out there, but it is one of the best speakers I've had for sheer value for money and ease of use in stereo pairing. So to get on with the point of this video, how does it compare against the 139 pound at retail Mini Rig Mark III against the retail, I think 99 pounds, but everywhere is at least 10 pound off, the Anker Soundcore Motion Plus speaker. And start off comparing a single Motion Plus against a single Mini Rig Mark III. We'll say the Mini Rig Mark III, just like the Motion Plus, the app does allow you to embed your own personal EQ settings into the speaker. Now that's great, that's really handy to have. I will say also, in terms of both of these speakers, for me, the major problem with, at the moment, the custom EQ is A, you only get one attempt at it, you can't save different custom settings and go back to those settings, and also, there aren't clear markings along the scale to see exactly where you are. And if you move it a little bit, you can't quite remember where you are. And there isn't a reset button to go back to the last position. So I think there's still some evolving to do with these EQ apps. However, it's great that we have it, but they could be, you know, it wouldn't take a whole lot of programming, would it? To simply let us have a choice of EQ settings, save custom one, custom two, custom three. It is awkward. I will also say in terms of sound core, I didn't realize at the time, I didn't realize now, that when you use custom settings and you're playing them both in stereo, if you set different custom settings for the speakers, they will play in those different custom settings. So if you want them balanced and playing in stereo, make sure you set both of them to the same custom EQ settings. So this is my comparison. I will say again, the sound core is recording at 53% volume. The mini rig on axis does play noticeably louder. I've recorded that at 47% volume and then to tried to match them up as equally as I can, normalizing them to sound the same volume. When it's off axis, again, I'm playing at 53% because obviously it's not quite the same volume. You're off axis. There's more of a roll off with this default EQ setting is with quite a sharp high end, but that rolls off and is obviously tuned to be played off axis using whatever surface you're on as the bass. And this high end that you get if you play straight default on axis rolls off it isn't there it's quite a flat setting the on axis i have used my own custom eq settings and i've set it like the sound core i've tried just simply to get it as flat as i could using my test tones and using actual tracks and recordings they are a little bit on the sharp side however that is the flat setting you don't have to use flat settings but i'm trying to make this comparison as balanced as possible as you course, if you have a problem with the high, the high pitched high ends, you only have to dial it down in the EQ. How? To make a fair comparison for this and future videos, I'm simply getting the custom settings as flat as I can. I'm not saying it's the best EQ settings and everyone is going to clearly love it. Oh, it's already clear to me some people don't love my EQ settings. I'm just saying they are my flattest settings. And to me, they say I'm pretty sparkly and I personally quite like it. Normally, I don't like a sharp high end but I'm quite happy with these settings. So 53%. Just to quickly show you why I've used custom setting rather than studio setting when I have the Mini Rig Mark III on axis, i.e. facing directly at you, it's because if you look at the studio setting, that's the blue line. And my custom setting is the green line. I think my green line is actually flatter. It's certainly bigger in the bass and it's more sparkly. So I've gone with my custom setting. I've also played it a setting lower in the volume scale because on axis does play louder than the Motion Plus, and of course, a lot louder than playing the Mini Rig off axis. Off axis, I'm playing it in the default setting, 
with no custom EQ. Here it's the orange line and you can see it is pretty flat off axis, although it does drop away at the high end. So by comparison to the other settings, it's going to sound a bit dull. However, it is quite flat. There is a decent bass. It's going to sound a bit bass heavy compared to the others because of the drop off at the high end. And the Motion Plus in yellow, pretty flat on this measurement, but it does have the drop off at the high end where the Mini Rig doesn't. And it's not quite as big in the bass as the Mini Rig with my custom setting at least. You can see for most of the frequency, it does drop away compared to the Mark III with my custom setting and with the studio setting from about 300 to about 2000 kilohertz where the Motion Plus does get a bit of a boost. So from these graphs, you're kind of expecting Motion Plus not to quite have the bass that the Mark III does when it's on axis with my custom settings. It sound a little bit thinner, but it does have that specific three kilohertz boost exactly where your ears are most sensitive in that high mids, in that high mids range, two to 4,000 kilohertz. So what does it sound like in reality? We're inside haunting, like a drug I keep on wanting. There's a love that fits so perfect, it's hard to believe. There's a reason I can feel my heart stop beating and the air gets tough just breathing. I'm alone, but I'm still feeling like someone's with me. It's strange, I know, but I feel like you're here with me. Like Jason Gold. I know you're out there. Just quickly show you in terms of accuracy. The Mini Rig off axis with its default tuning is actually a little bit more accurate. If a little bit more dull sounding on axis, the Mark III and the sound core on first glance look pretty similar. So the Mark III off axis against on axis, so face up facing the listener. The biggest difference is there's more sparkle on axis. It's coming straight at you and that does make a difference, even if it doesn't show in the graph. However, there is more bass when you have it off axis. It is using the surface to fill out the sound a bit. So when played at the same volume off axis with the driver facing up, it's a little bit fuller in the bass. It's not a massive difference, but you can clearly see it's a little bit fuller, but you do get a little bit of a drop around the seven and a half thousand, eight thousand kilohertz when you have it off axis versus having it on axis where it's 
a lot stronger. Obviously, you, c you can change that using the EQ, but it's a lot more sparkle on axis. And of course, it plays a lot louder. However, this is when it's normalized and you're playing it at the same volumes. And the Mark III on axis, which is how I prefer to play it, against the sound core Motion Plus. The Motion Plus obviously has a thinner sound. First of all, the bass, although it's well extended, it doesn't match the Mark III. For example, if you look at the real extension, say around 40 hertz, it's hitting minus 54 against the Mark III, near minus 44. So it's like 10 decibels stronger at the 40 hertz mark. 50 hertz, 20, minus 27. So it can hold its own, but it just doesn't fill out the bass as much as the Mark III does. The bass is certainly there, but along with sounding thinner and having that boost around the 3 kilohertz, it sounds sharper, but it does sound clearer, but it is a thinner sound than the Mark III, which is much stronger in the upper bass, like around the 200 hertz mark. And you're getting a lot of warmth from that area in the Mark III. But given that the sound core is a lot cheaper, it does hold its own. And the big thing is when you're only playing against one Mark III, the stereo that you're getting from, and the wide stereo, because of the wide tweeters that you get from the sound core, it's, it is a lot of fun. It might not be quite as natural, and resolve the detail that the Mark III does, will be as full of sound. But given that it's some 40 plus pounds cheaper, it does hold its own in my opinion. The Mark III clearly a more hi-fi speaker. It's clearly technically superior. You clearly, it is more full bodied. We're hearing nuances in the sound that you are not hearing from Soundcore and Motion Plus speaker. However, when you only have a single Mark III, and you have this wide dispersed stereo of the anchor, I still prefer a single Ocean Plus speaker over the sound of the Mark III because it's a lot more fun. It's a lot more open. I do prefer that nature. I find that a lot more fun. If you want a serious listen, you're gonna go with the Mark III. But I have to say one against one at these sort of volume levels, where we're not into bass roll off territory yet, I am preferring as a fun listen, the Motion Plus. So the question is, okay, that's without the bass roll-offs, obviously, that you're gonna get higher up the scale. What happens when you really push them? Go to maximum volumes. Just want to show you quickly why my audio test was only done with mini rig on axis using custom settings rather than using the recommended studio settings or using it off axis quite simply custom settings on axis is the loudest it will go it's the loudest i can measure it at and it's a loudness test the studio setting in yellow which is what they say is the flat setting for on axis doesn't go anywhere near as loud as the on axis using the custom settings which is the red line while having very similar bass. And as for off axis, again, doesn't go as loud as on axis custom setting and doesn't offer anything extra in the bass. You can see here, the Motion Plus. Surprisingly, it doesn't play as loud as the Mini Rig, but it keeps more of the bass. So there's two distinct sounds going on. The clearer but thinner sound of the Mark III when played at maximum, and the quieter but more bass heavy sound of the Motion Plus. It's gonna be a matter of taste of what you want as you go up to the maximum volumes. So maximum volume is really interesting 
the Mark III clearly goes louder, but it doesn't have the bass. So while it's overall louder, look at those bass figures. The Motion Plus, the Motion Plus is 2.7 decibels louder and 81 hertz. That peak there, which is on the Motion Plus, this peak here. Look at that difference. 71 hertz, this peak four decibels louder and the Motion Plus at maximum volume compared to the Mark III. So very different sounding, but in terms of, oh, do you want it to go loud? It's very much a case of, do you want it to go loud, but still have some bass? Or do you want it sounding much clearer and louder and carries a bit more, but bass light on the Mark III? In terms of absolute peaks, the Mark III, 104.2, Motion Plus, 102.1 in absolute peak terms. So that's the highest sound pressure level you're going to get. The difference is a couple of decibel. So the Mark III, two decibels louder, absolute peaks, nearly two decibels louder on average, but you just don't have the bass that you have, which is obvious to your ears when you're listening at maximum volumes, that you still get on the Motion Plus. So again, the Mark III, clearly technically superior, clearly plays louder, 40 watts versus 30 watts of the Motion Plus. Very different in nature. So you are getting some bass on the sound core, and it's a steep roll off in bass on the Mark III. They openly say they do that, so it plays loud, especially outside. So they're going for maximum volume. It's gonna be a matter of taste if you want the kind of thinny, clear sound, but louder of the Mark III against the bit more bass, but quite muted for the rest of the frequency range sound core. So it does play louder. You can hear the difference, but again, the fact that it's widely dispersed the fact that it has a bit holds on to a bit more bass may prefer one over the other so again go remember 139 pound 99 pound and they're still you know lower volumes i think i prefer the wider dispersed sound high volumes well it's going to be a matter of taste it's doing well isn't it against the more expensive speakers however both of them are wireless stereo when you go to stereo and so obviously you're going to Hopefully you still get a widely dispersed sound from the Mark III's. Do we still prefer the sound core or do we still prefer the Mark III? What happens in stereo? Change, oh. 
I stopped asking for forgiveness Cause you should know Only fools dread were the angels Fear to go But you keep praying it get too close Save myself by turning into stone say the sound core does work every time in wireless stereo I'm not getting a problem the wireless lock works faultlessly with my mark threes I have an issue because I manually have to link them each time I turn them on I know you're not supposed to I know there's a wireless lock and I have mine turned on and when they're when they're actually in wireless pairing mode my app says they are locked but they don't stay locked as soon as I turn them off turn it off I, as soon as I turn them on, turn them off. I've been on the phone with the people and they keep taking you through the resets and make sure one isn't actually a paired Bluetooth, I only have one as a player, and they take you through steps and sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't work when I go through the steps. However, where I am now is I can predictably, and it's not too bad, manually pair them. Each time I have to start them both up by physically going into pairing mode on my main unit. You may have heard in my recordings, there were a couple of occasions when the Mark III's lost sync a little bit. I did leave that in because I'm getting that quite often. And I started by re-recording the tracks and it kept doing it. And it does do it while you're playing quite often. So I've left it in. If you hear it, that's what it does. And if you didn't hear it, then it's not going to be an issue to you. You didn't hear it anyway. Don't get that with the sound core. Now, having said that, I do prefer... When you go to stereo, a pair of Mark III's. If you are thinking a pair of Mark III's versus a pair of sound cores, I do prefer, especially when I'm playing on axis, which is how I prefer it, it's clearly a more mature sound, it's clearly more hi-fi, you're clearly hearing more details, there's clearly more body to the sound. The advantage the stereo single sound core has over a single mono Mark III goes. If you're thinking a pair of one or a pair of the other, and you simply want the best sound, it is the Mark III's. It is the Mini Rig Mark III's. It's clearly a better sound. If you want guaranteed, no fuss, easy wireless stereo pairing, well, I do get issues with disconnects and wireless lock not working on the Mark III's. This is one of the first speakers when they first came out. Maybe they've improved it. I don't know. I'm just saying, for me, if I had to get one pair of the other, I would still get the Mark III's, but it is a hassle, and the sound cores are hassle-free. If I'm only getting a single speaker and I'm starting from scratch, I would get just the sound core. But of course the problem is the sound core can only grow into a pair of sound cores, whereas the mini rig can grow into as many speakers as you want. Ultimately, you're probably aiming for a 2.2 and it does sound fantastic in a 2.2. And just to point out, when they assured us, certainly assured me, they had no plans for a Mark III sub when the mini rig Mark III came out. They have indeed now announced their plans for a Mark III sub. Well, maybe, you know, it really was not planned at the time they told us. Maybe it was never thought of at the time they made the Mini Rig Mark III, but the marketing does say they're making the new sub to match the new Mini Rig Mark III. I would have thought it was in planning. So, yeah, a little bit peeved about that. 
But there you are, Mini Rigs, a system that can grow into 2.2 and sound absolutely fantastic when it is all working or a no hassle system, a pair of sound cores, it works every time, but it's never gonna sound true hi-fi. It's always gonna sound a lot of fun and it's gonna sound thinner. It clearly doesn't have the body of the Mark III. It's an inferior speaker, but it's more fun when you have a single one. So I hope that answered some questions and thank you for watching. UK.